this is Stacy Phillips and today is Sunday, July 28th. I wanted to talk today about an article uh, and what it meant to me uh, that I picked up in uh, yesterday in this month's issue of National Geographic. It's the August edition and it says sugar, um, why we can't resist it. So um, what a fascinating article. If you have a chance to um, pick that edition up or do the online edition, I'm not sure if they have online or not, but it's a fascinating article and really, um, you know, highlights um, a lot of why we, why we crave sugar, you know, why we crave even fructose and sweet things and yummy things and, you know, why we crave those things. And um, really it's, it, it's in our genetic makeup is in our DNA to crave those things. Um, it was, it was really, uh, meant for our survival about 10,000 years ago and it's fascinating because Dr. A talks about those very things and that very premise um, in Dr. A's Habits of Health and also his new book which was number one on the Barnes & Noble um, list a book of books which is called Discover Your Optimal Health. I highly recommend both of those books. Start with Discovering Your Optimal Health. Start with that one uh, by Dr. Wayne Scott Anderson and then move over to um, Dr. A's Habits of Health after you've fully digested the first book, the Discovering Your Optimal Health. But this article, again, really talked about, you know, what he talks about as well, that our bodies were designed um, to be really efficient at, um, at, at using that type of energy and that um, we very much want to um, consume a lot of it. <laughs> so, you know, back 10,000 years ago, the, the, the consumption of it was really limited to fruits, um, you know, and, and the fructose that we got in uh, even vegetables and things like that because that was um, that was where it came from but 10,000 years ago also uh, in a little island called New Guinea um, where sugar can be traced back to actual you know sugar cane and and the um, cultivating of it for for purposes of eating it um, consuming it is New Guinea about 10,000 years ago and it was a very closely guarded secret um, the the development of it uh, through the years, um, even up to 500 AD, was still very um, guarded, and it was a real um, luxury, really. Sugar was, white table sugar um, from cane sugar was a guarded secret in how to make it, but it was also considered a very, very luxury item, and was actually considered a spice for a long time, you know, right up there with um, nutmeg and, and ginger and cardamom, um, those very expensive um, spices. So only the very, very wealthy um, people and nations had it. But when it came to, to be able to be cheaply manufactured and distributed, um, you know, that's where we get now all of the, the, the cheap foods that have a lot of sugar in them. And our bodies respond to that. Um, and we respond to that. It's, it talks about how eating sugar um, hits the pleasure centers of the brain in the exact same way as cocaine and heroin. So it is really a highly addictive substance. I guess it depends on how addictive our personalities are and what, what we've utilized it in the past and all that. But the biggest thing that I came away with was that um, we don't have to concern ourselves so, so much with the why. I remember I used to beat myself up all the time um, before really getting a handle on, on my weight issues and, and desiring health. I used to beat myself up all the time because you know, I did exactly what I didn't want to do again, you know, and why do I do this and why can I be successful in other areas, but I, but I can't seem to get, you know, a hold on, on my chocolate addiction or, you know, my desire for um, sweet things or breads or pastas or all of those things. And um, really, I don't have to worry about the why. I mean, the why is a no-brainer. We, we crave it. We, it's an addictive substance, you know, end of story. I don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a therapy couch to to figure out why you know it's there's enough information out there to, to tell me why and that guess what it's, it's not my fault however that being said I need to concern myself if I want to have the quality of life that I choose to have for myself if I want to live up to my full potential in in what who I can be as a mom and as a wife and as a member of my community and serving others I really needed to get a handle on my behavior and really coming into an energy balance because at 272 pounds, walking with a cane, you know, I couldn't even I couldn't even do anything for myself, let alone um, serve other people or or help them in their journeys. I couldn't do any of that. And so to be the kind of person I wanted to be, I had to figure out the how. I had to establish healthy habits 
that would override my habits of disease. And so that is what I started doing. I started worrying about the how. And you know what? In the bigger picture, I did start worrying about the why, but it wasn't the why I did what I did. It was why I want optimal health. So I focused on that why. Why do I want this? Why do I desire to be optimally healthy? And I focused on that why uh, instead of the negative why that you know pushed me down and you know kept me down on the ground. Um, so that why is an important one. Is why did I want optimal health? Why did I want to change my behavior? Not why do I do it? You know, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's, it's genetically imprinted in our DNA to, to crave fructose and sugar and sweet things. And it just is. So, um, so what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you today? Um, you, know, you may be struggling with a sugar addiction. You may be struggling with um, pasta addiction, bread addiction, garlic bread addiction, whatever. You know, black licorice addiction. Goodness knows I've been there. Um, you may be struggling with that, and you might be focusing on that thinking, I have to not do that anymore, and focusing on not doing something. And let me just challenge you to turn your thoughts a little bit, not focusing on what you want to stop doing, but what healthy habits do you want to start doing? Because as you incrementally practice healthy habits that you mindfully and intentionally adopt daily, you're going to be edging out those unhealthy habits. Um, they'll stay dormant in your brain. We've got you know hard wiring going on in there, but you'll be making new ruts, new ruts in your brain for new behaviors. So what do you want to accomplish today? And in, in light of, of how you want to live and how you can change your behaviors, and if you need any assistance with that, I am a free health coach and I would love to assist you. Um, if you already have a health coach, then you would uh, be connected with them and they can guide you through the same things um, with Dr. A's Habits of Health and support and accountability to help you get to exactly where you want to go. Um, so, but if you do not already have a health coach, please feel free to contact me at my coach Stacy, M Y C O A C H S T A C Y at gmail.com. That's my coach Stacy at gmail.com. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.